Over the past few months, Game Freak has been releasing 7-star Terror Raid battles into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and these Pokemon have not only been extremely powerful, have had their hidden abilities, and have had a separate Terror type apart from their main typings, but they've also had the Mightiest Mark, which makes them a decent collectible for players. Uh, because they're in a Terror Raid battle, it also makes a good opportunity for people to catch these Pokemon in a special ball, guaranteed, that uh, they may have not been able to get them in that ball before. For instance, you know, you can get a Cinderace now in any kind of ball, whereas before it was only available in a Pokeball because it was only available as a starter. Uh, so these Terra Raid battles are decently important. And I think I've noticed a pattern with these Terra Raids that actually will allow us to predict the future of what the Pokemon will be, what Terra type they will be, and perhaps a couple of special event Pokemon that could be coming out. Uh, not new event Pokemon, but just event Pokemon that might be noteworthy. Uh, so let's get into this discussion. So the first thing we want to discuss is what we currently have at the moment. So the first three mightiest Pokemon that came out were Charizard, Cinderace, and Greninja. Charizard had the Dragon Terror type, Cinderace had the Fighting Terror type, and Greninja had the Poison Terror type. These were all pretty on brand for their typings. Charizard, of course, is Dragon. Cinderace, being a sporty type, easily fits into the Fighting typing. And Greninja, the Ninja Pokemon, uh, obviously has an affinity for Poison. And it also made sense from their moves perspectives. Of course, Charizard can have a variety of Dragon moves. Cinderace has High Jump Kick as its second most sp spammable move. And Greninja can have Gung Shot. Toxic spikes, things like that, that, that make it very obviously a good candidate for poison. And again, like I said, these starters are all very popular, so it made some sense to start with those to get people hype about these terror raids. Next up, we had two terror raid battles that were not mightiest, but I do want to mention them here just for sake of completion. So after Greninja, we actually had Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. And these Pokemon were not 7-star raid battles, they were only 5-star raid battles, even though they were quite difficult. At least I thought Iron Leaves was pretty tricky. And uh, I do want to talk about their terror types. They were not separate from what they currently were. So for instance, Walking Wake is a water and a dragon type, and it had the water terror type. Iron Leaves is a grass and psychic type, and it had the grass type. This is as opposed to all previous of these mightiest battles. Where they had a separate terror type. So I don't think that, that these terror raids should factor in to our current discussion. Our current discussion is only for Mightiest Pokemon. I didn't want to mention them just so that uh, we can think about it going forward. The next Mightiest Pokemon was actually Pikachu, which I suppose technically is a starter Pokemon, and it had the water terror type. This makes sense because Pikachu is often thought of as a surfing Pokemon, even though it wasn't really able to get it until Gen 7 outside of events, it has always had that special surf move ever since Gen 1. So it made sense. Uh, the next three that came out were Decidueye, Samurott, and Typhlosion. And all of these three actually were the starters from uh, Legends Arceus. And they didn't necessarily match their counterparts in that game one-to-one. -one. So Decidueye in, that, in Legends Arceus is a fighting type, but Decidueye in this game had the flying terror type. Samurott, even though it gains the dark terror type, or the, the dark type in Legends Arceus, it was bug here. But Typhlosion did get the ghost type that matches its Legend Arceus form, the Suian form. So... Uh, there, there's not a one-to-one -one correlation one way or the other there, but of course, flying is not Decidueye's natural typing, uh, Bug is not Samurott's natural typing, and Ghost, again, is not Typhlosion's natural typing. So for all three of these, they once again choose a terror type that's different from their own. And they're all in a group together because they all came, uh, they were starters in Legends Arceus. And now the next Pokemon that we're getting uh, here on Friday is ice type Inteleon. Now, Inteleon being ice type doesn't necessarily make the most sense, 
Personally, I think it could have been a good candidate for dark typing. Since it has the whole spy and espionage thing going on. And dark, spy, something like that. I think that could have been fine. And uh, Inteleon doesn't really get the most coverage though. So really you only had one or two options. And so I, I suppose is an acceptable option for Inteleon. Now, moving forward from this, we enter into unknown territory where we don't know what exactly will happen. But given the patterns of the past, I believe Game Freak has established a pretty solid uh, formula moving forward. And I actually think that we can accurately predict the terror types of many, if not most of the Pokemon moving forward based off of how they've established the previous ones. So looking forward, I believe the next Pokemon that need to come out are Rillaboom, Chestnut, and Delphox. Rillaboom is, of course, the last starter from Gen 8 that we still need. And Chestnut and Delphox are also a Pokemon from Gen 6, like Greninja is. Now, as opposed to Decidueye, Samurai, and Typhlosion, which didn't necessarily have any reason to be here, but made sense from the Legends Arceus perspective, why did Thunderace come into the game? Why did Greninja come into the game? Well, we have from previous data mines the ability to see Pokemon that are going to be able to be transferred through home. And we've seen that all the Gen 6 and Gen 8 starters fit that. So we do know that Rillaboom, once home functionality is available, Rillaboom will be in the game. Similarly uh, to Greninja, Chestnut and Delphox will also be available to transfer through home. So we do know that those three should be coming out here soon, uh, following after Inteleon, which falls into the same category as well. So we have to decide what terror types uh, these Pokemon should be. And it should be something that fits with them thematically, and ideally, we'd like it to be something that doesn't match their primary terror type. However, I'm going to break that rule right away. And we're just going to get this out of the way uh, straight off the bat. And we're going to give Rillaboom the Grass Terror type. And the reason we're going to give Rillaboom the Grass Terror type is that I believe that they're going to go through each of the main 18 types and only have one Pokemon be the representative for each of the types for these Mightiest Mark Pokemon. So there'll be 18 Mightiest Mark Pokemon in total and each type has to be represented. And given the Pokemon that we have left on the list and just by process of elimination, Rillaboom Sort of ends up with that. Rillaboom can spam things like Drain Punch, but uh, that already has been counted for with Cinderace and Fighting Typing. And there is a better Dark candidate for knockoff. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll see a better Dark candidate. So I don't believe that uh, Grass really fits anywhere else on the list other than on Rillaboom. So I do think Rillaboom makes sense for grass just because it was known for spamming grass to glide in grass to terrain and so i think having a really powerful grass type might be a one-off strange decision for the end but it, given the list i think it makes sense uh, next up chestnut i think will come out with the steel terror type chestnut is sort of an armor tanky pokemon and steel fits that theming quite nicely Steel also makes a lot of sense in terms of Chestnut defensively. Uh, defensively, Chestnut has the grass typing, which would help against ground types that would want to come in and deal with the steel terror typing. And the fighting terror typing is also quite nice in a similar vein with that. Now, uh, Delphox, I think, is going to be fairy. There's not many typings that Delphox could be. Technically, Delphox could be a Grass Terra type because it has Grass Knot, but I really think that's a stretch. It, grass Knot is really not one of Delphox's main moves that it's known for. And I think Dazzling Gleam being sort of the fairy mystical thing, it's a lot better with the Witch theming. So I do think Delphox will be the fairy typing. So these three Pokemon are the only ones that were in the original data mine that showed that they will be transferable through home. So I think that these three are going to be the next ones to come out. I don't necessarily know if they're going to wait until all of these ones have come out before they give us home functionality. I sure hope not, but it's a distinct possibility. 
do watch out for that. Now, we still have a bunch of typings left over, and so we're going to quickly address how these are going to be covered. So, we have Gen 5 representation with Samurott, and we have Gen 2 representation with Typhlosion, and it's a possibility that we could get the rest of Gen 2 and Gen 5 as well, given what we've seen from previous data mines. We've been able to see Pokemon uh, from certain starters get removed their Pokedex entries, and if those Pokedex entries get removed, then that's a good indication that these Pokemon are coming to the game through DLC. And I'll have that up on screen here. So, uh, I, I think the Gen 2 and Gen 5 starters will fit nicely onto this list. And starting off uh, on a strong note, we have Embor. Embor, I believe, will be the Rock Terra type and it'll spam Reckless Head Smash. And that'll be a big problem for people. I think that makes a lot of sense for Embor. Superior is a sort of a Pokemon like Rillaboom that doesn't get a lot of coverage. Originally, I thought maybe Superior would also be a good candidate for the Grass Terra typing and spam Contrary Leaf Storm. But I think that actually Superior will be the normal Terra type because normal is basically the only other Terra type it could be. Um, besides maybe Dragon, the Charizard already took Dragon. So I think Superior will be our normal Terra type. Meganium being a big dinosaur type thing, I think we'll get the ground terror type. That makes sense in terms of keeping it safe from the fire, fire types and the grass keeping it safe from the water types. And also it gets earthquake. So I think, you know, a swords dance, earthquake, petal blizzard, leaf, uh, a giga drain could make a lot of sense in terms of a move set for that terror raid battle. A uh, Alligator will almost certainly be the dark terror type, I believe and it'll spam Dragon Dance, Crunch, and then a bunch of other really strong moves. So that'll be a really, really scary Terra Raid. Now we only have three Terra types left, and this is where we get into a big and bold prediction on my part. So my big prediction is that the final three Terra types are actually going to be legendary, uh, Mightiest Pokemon. The Mighty Battles are already really tough, so I'm not even sure how this Terra Raid battle would play out. Because it seems like it would be impossible to beat. But it's maybe going to happen. And so uh, if that did, then you'd get a really cool legendary Pokemon with the Mightiest Mark. And so by process of elimination, you can sort of guess which Terra types are left. And the first two that we need to talk about is Crydon and Midrydon. I believe they're going to have a Mightiest Mark for those Pokemon specifically, and similar to how Walking Wake and Iron Leaves were version specific, I think this will be a version specific Mightiest Mark where Coridon will go to Violet and Scarlet will get Miradon. That way you can, you can get the Pokemon that you didn't get in your main version. And Coridon will be the Fire Terror type. This synergizes with its sun. And of course, most Coridons, I feel like, run the Fire Terror type outside of, you know, whatever you get in-game. But you usually change that to be Fire, because it's really powerful. A Miradon is actually going to be another exception, where it's actually going to get to keep its original typing, Electric. Because if we think about it, Coridon is boosted by the Sun, but it's not a Fire type. So giving it the fire type, now it has really strong flare blitzes and the sun or flamethrowers or whatever they want to give it in the terror raid battle. Miradon is boosted by electric terrain, so it wouldn't make sense to give it something thematically appropriate and electric would be uh, just fine for that. Finally, we have one left last type and that is the psychic typing. And this is partially the reason why I needed to bring up the walking wake and iron leaves from before, because we have had the Iron Leaves be a Psychic type. And so I didn't want people to think, well, we've already had a Psychic type. Why are you bringing it up now? But as we saw before, Walking Wake and Iron Leaves sort of are outside of the context of this Mightiest Mark discussion. And so Walking Wake and or Iron Leaves shouldn't count as the Psychic type. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Uh, but for the Psychic type, I actually think we're going to get Mewtwo. And it'll be sort of the capstone to this entire Mightiest Mark adventure you know you give it about a year to to get these all rolled out and then after that you can move on to other 
endeavors or maybe have one-off mightiests if you feel like it but that that sort of gives you a roadmap of how game freak might say for a year we're going to do these mightiest mark terror raid battles then we'll have dlc and we'll have other terror raid battles at that point to keep people's uh, attention but the the mightiest marks will be for a year and they've planned it out with all these terror types and so at the end of that, the culmination will be this Mightiest Mark Mewtwo. We know the Mewtwo will be in the game, already transferable through home once home is available. And Mewtwo being the, the Psychic Cat Pokemon can have this, this triumphant, stupidly difficult Mightiest Mark terror battle where it's going to be spamming Psy Strike in Psychic Terrain. And, uh, and it'll be the Psychic Terror type. So we have three typings here that actually do match which sort of breaks the rules. And so that's the part I'm not exactly sure about. But really with Rillaboom, I don't know what else you'd give it that hasn't already been taken or accounted for by some other Pokemon that would also make thematic sense. So I think Grass is fine for Rillaboom. And uh, and then the Coridon Miradon just makes sense to me. I don't think that anything else would get electric. And then Mewtwo. Being psychic, I think you can give that a pass as well. It's it's a bit too on brand for you to not to keep it psychic. I think. So, uh, those are my thoughts. I, I think this is a pretty strong candidate for what's going to happen, and at least a few of these I'm pretty sure are going to happen. I do think Rock and Boar is almost a lock, and I think Fairy Delphox and Steel Chestnut are pretty dang likely as well. If we do see those come out, then the moving forward. I think that these predictions are are more likely than not going to happen, at least half of them. So we'll see how good I got on my predictions, uh, but let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time.